One of the themes that is running through this week's scripture readings is that of encouragement. No matter what happens in our lives, if we ask and prepare ourselves, the risen Lord will always be with us. The story of the two discouraged disciples on the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus, it shows us how Christ our Lord is near to those who seek him and have a strong desire to live in his presence. Our Lord will not abandon us even in our deepest despair or fear. If we but prepare and desire to be in a relationship with him, Today's gospel shows that those desiring to have a closeness to the Lord and the graces that he is offering are asked to work at maintaining that relationship with Jesus through prayer, scripture study, and reception of the Eucharist. And at this time in our lives, for so many of us, it is that spiritual communion that we ask for. And finally, we are called to action. That final step, our actions, indicate that we want to continue to have a close relationship with our Lord. I would ask you to picture for a moment the last time you went to the grocery store or out someplace shopping in a store where you needed to pick up things for your family. Did you see some people who were not wearing protective masks? And did this want, did this make you want to ask them, are you the only people in Minnesota who have not heard about the spreading of the coronavirus? What is true for us in this present moment is that we need to do more than just educate ourselves on how the coronavirus spreads. We must act upon that knowledge to keep ourselves and others safe. Today's gospel is telling us that it is not just, it is not enough to just know that Jesus has saved us. We must act upon that knowledge and encourage others to do so. The followers of Jesus Christ are asked not only to receive the Lord in the Eucharist, but to maintain a contact with the risen Lord through prayer, scripture reading, and action. We are to use the reception of the body and blood of Christ to lead us to more prayer and more scripture and more action. We are to translate the graces that we receive in the Eucharist and the knowledge that we attain, we are to translate that into action. Remember for a moment those two that were on the road to Emmaus. They knew about the Easter resurrection. Yet that was not enough to keep them in the Jerusalem community of disciples. They were bailing out, so to speak, because they were disappointed of some of the events during this Easter time. The empty tomb did not even bolster their faith. Instead, it seemed to deflate them so that it appeared that they were skipping town. What happened to help them decide to turn around and rejoin the other disciples that were locked in the upper room? Three things, scripture study, their scripture study with the Lord on the road. The second was their act of hospitality. And the third was their reception of the Eucharist. The act of hospitality happened when they invited a stranger to stay with them. That act of kindness opened opened them up to the possibility of encountering Christ in a special way. And it should be noted here that they were walking and talking with Christ for quite a while and still did not encounter him despite the Bible study that he was giving them. Now once they offered that charity to the stranger, they were spiritually prepared to receive what was awaiting them in the breaking of the bread. Emmaus teaches us that words are not enough Jesus will only be fully known in service, sacrament, and prayer. Scripture scholars believe that Cleopas and his companion, that they were good Jews who were awaiting the Messiah. In all likelihood, they had heard about Jesus' Palm Sunday entrance 
into Jerusalem. We know that they were taking off the Passover weekend to go and meet this prophet, this Messiah, that they hoped would turn out to be the long-awaited Messiah. Their actions tell us they wanted to become one of his disciples. They, like so many good Jews, probably hoped that the Messiah would end the Jewish struggle for justice under the oppression that they had been experiencing for so many years. But when the scene opens in today's reading, they were on their way home, dejected that nothing had happened to bring freedom to the oppressed. For Jesus had been arrested, tortured, and crucified. Even though they knew of the reports of his rising from the dead, they still believed that the kingdom of God had not been restored to the Jewish people. Remember how when Jesus joined them, he asked them why they looked so downcast, and they told him the story of what had happened? That they had gone to see their hope for Messiah? Once Jesus allowed them to tell their story, he immediately began to explain to them in detail how sacred scripture had actually been fulfilled by the actions of this man, this Messiah. And even though the two listened intently and had felt a burning desire within themselves, they did not fully hear what Jesus was saying. Oh, they heard his words all right, but somehow... They did not grasp what Jesus was revealing to them. How often does that happen to us? We tell our story to our Lord Jesus. He listens. But it is only later through our prayer, our study, and our reception of the Eucharist that we are led to an understanding of how our need is or will be fulfilled. The Emmaus story is about two who studied and prayed with Jesus before breaking bread with him, before receiving the Eucharist. By doing the study and the prayer and then receiving the Eucharist, their eyes were open to Jesus' way. Suddenly they understood. Now with wide, eyes wide open, what did they do? They immediately acted again. They rose up from table and walked through the night a dangerous time to once again join the disciples in their journey about speaking out the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel message. Now the question is, what about us? What are we going to do this week to spread the word of Jesus Christ to our family, to our workplace, to our school, to our neighborhood? Pray that you will not just sit around this week downcast and let the actions of the world around you infect you. Rather, do something to affect a positive change in helping others to deepen their belief in Jesus Christ and the goodness that he has to offer each one of us.